So we're continuing uh, 3.1, investigating quadratic functions in vertex form, and that's still on pages 142 to 162. And our curriculum objective is to demonstrate understanding of quadratic functions of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and of their graphs, including vertex, domain and range, direction of opening, axis symmetry, and x and y intercepts. Our lesson outcomes, we want to be able to find the equation of a quadratic function when given different types of information. We want to be able to determine how many x-intercepts a quadratic function has based on the values for a and q. And we want to be able to apply the satisfying the equation principle when dealing with quadratic functions. So we now know what each of the variables a, p, and q do in the formula of a quadratic function um, when it looks like f of x equals a times x minus p squared plus q. We know that a determines the width of the function and whether it opens up or down. So if a is a number greater than one, we know that it's gonna be skinnier than normal. And if a is between zero and one, we know that it's gonna be wider than normal. And we also know that if a is positive, it opens up, and if a is negative, it opens down, which is sometimes why they say the absolute value of a, because it could be a positive number greater than one, or it could be a negative number less than one. Um, P describes how far the parabola shifts from left to right compared to a normal parabola that has its vertex at 0, 0. If in these brackets it's x minus P, that means the parabola moves to the right. And if in the brackets it's x plus P, that means that the parabola moves to the left. And this really just shifts the vertex. So the vertex is that bottom part of a parabola or the top part of a parabola, the minimum or the maximum point, and it'll just shift the whole parabola left or right. This also means that the axis of symmetry moves as well because the axis of symmetry is that imaginary line that goes right down the middle of your parabola. So if the vertex moves left and right, then that means the axis of symmetry also moves left and right. And finally, Q describes how far the parabola shifts up and down compared to a normal parabola that has its vertex at zero, zero. So if you have a positive Q or a positive constant at the end, that means the parabola moves up and negative Q means the parabola moves down. And again, if the whole parabola is moving really, what's moving is the vertex. So our next few examples, I'll deal with questions where we need to use the quadratic function in the vertex form. So the first one says, determine a quadratic function in vertex form for the following graph. So here's a graph of our parabola. So we know that we have this vertex form, y equals a x minus p squared plus q. And we know right off the, the graph of this thing, we can find our vertex and we can plug it in for p and q. So our vertex here is two comma one. So we end up with y equaling a x minus two squared plus one. So we just plug these values straight into the equation. Now, you always need to find the value for a, and to do that, we need to use this concept of satisfying the equation. So any point, any other point that's on this parabola satisfies the equation, which means that if I plug that point into my, my equation, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. And if that's the case, then any point that I pick and I plug in for x and y, then I can solve for what a is going to be. So I'm going to pick this point right here. This point is 1, 5. So I get 5 equals a 1 minus 2 squared plus 1. And now I can easily solve for, for a. So 5, I subtract 1 equals a 1 minus 2 squared is just 1. And so that means a is a value of 4. So my equation is y equals a, sorry, y equals 4 x minus 2 squared plus 1. So I'm gonna pick the other point just to prove my case and this whole concept of satisfying the equation. If I plug in this other point, I should still get the same equation because I'm still talking about the same problem. So the other point is three comma five. So if I do that, I get five equaling a um, three minus two squared plus one. And once again, if I subtract one from both sides, I get four and three minus two is one and one squared is one. So that gives me an A value of four again. So it doesn't matter what point you pick from your parabola, as long as you put it into your equation and be careful that you put the X value of your point in the X part of the equation and the Y value of your point in the Y part of your equation. So you can find out what that value for A actually is. So here's another example. It says determine the number of X intercepts at each of the following quadratic functions. So here we have F of X equals 0 0.5 X squared minus seven. So right off the bat, what you need to know is where is the vertex here? So the vertex here is at zero comma negative seven because there's nothing in with the, with the X here. So that means that the X value of the vertex or the P value 
is uh, 0 and this is a negative 7. So this means, I always like to draw a quick little sketch, 0 comma negative 7 is just down here somewhere. Now, this parabola also opens up. We know that because your a value is positive. So that means that this thing is going to look something like that. So there's going to be two x-intercepts. So really, by knowing where, how to find the vertex and knowing what your value for a is, we can now determine exactly how many x-intercepts there could be. So the second one here says that it's negative 2 times x plus 1 squared, and there's no value for q. So we know that our vertex is at negative 1 comma 0 this time. So I always like to draw a little sketch, looks like that, and that it opens down. Well, if my vertex happens to be right on my x-axis, that means that there's only one x-intercept. And finally, the last one says if I have negative 0 0.125 and we have x minus 5 squared minus 11, our vertex is at 5 comma negative 11. So that means it's 5 comma negative 11, it's down here somewhere. And this value, your a value, tells you which way the parabola opens, and that tells me that it's going to open down. So in this case, we have zero x-intercepts, because it's a parabola opening down, and the vertex is already below the x-axis. So here's our last example. It says, suppose a parabolic archway has a width of 280 centimeters and a height of 216 centimeters at its highest point above the floor. Write a quadratic function in vertex form that models the shape of this archway. So drawing a sketch always helps. There's our parabola, and it says that it is 280 centimeters across and 216 centimeters up. So if we're going to write this in a um, vertex form, we need to be able to find the vertex. And when we're finding the vertex, that means that we're looking at this point right here. Now that's halfway because parabolas are perfectly symmetrical from left to right. And so that means our vertex is at 140, 216. And that's if we were to draw, like, put this thing on a coordinate plane, an x and a y axis, right? So we get y equals a x minus 140 squared plus 216. Now, we need to be able to find this value for a, and the only way we can do that is to pick a point that's on this parabola. Well, the, the easiest point to pick that's on the parabola is this point right here at 0, 0. This one over here is at 280 and 0, but 0, 0 is easier to plug into our equation. So we're going to do that. So we get 0 equals a, 0 minus 140 squared plus 216. We move the 216 over, it becomes negative 216. And then we have negative 140 squared, so we end up with negative 216 divided by uh, 19,600. Now you could simplify this again by continuing to divide by 2 and whatever, um, but for now we're just going to leave it at that. So y equals negative 216 over 19,600, and that is x minus 140 squared plus 216. So this is the equation for this parabola. Now, part B says that we're going to try and move a 200 centimeter tall box that's 80 centimeters wide through the arch. Is it actually going to fit? So at 200 centimeters, we're actually going to see, we need to find out how wide it is across from here to here. If it's greater than 80 centimeters wide, then this box will fit. But if it's not, then this box isn't going to fit. So you can do one of two things. You can plug in the 200 in for the height and then interpret your answer. Or you could plug in the 80 in for your x and then determine your answer. So I'm going to do the harder of the two. I'm going to plug in 200 for height. Because plugging 80 in for x is pretty easy. You just plug it in here, figure out what your height is. So what we need to do is then this. We know that the height is that we're looking for is 200. Or the height we know is 200, sorry. What we're looking for is the width. So we get x minus 140 squared plus 216. Now we just need to solve this thing. So I'm going to subtract 216 from both sides. I get negative 16 equals negative 216 divided by 19600 x minus 140. I'm going to multiply by 19600 and divide by negative 216 and I end up with 140, 140, 1451, sorry, 0.85. Let me rewrite that. 1451 
0.85 and then I also get x minus 140 squared. So in order to get rid of this squared sign, I'm going to take the square roots of both sides. And I, when I do that, I have to remember that this becomes plus or minus on the left-hand side. So that's plus or minus 38.1. And that's still x minus 140. So if I'm solving for x, I get 140 plus or minus 38.1. Which, if I add 38.1, I get 178.1. That's how wide it is over here, 178 centimeters. And I also get 140 minus 38.1 gives me 101.9 centimeters. And that would be this other point right here. That's 101.9 centimeters. So if I look at this, I have 178.1 to 101.9. If I subtract the two, I'll be able to find the width between these two points. And when I do that, I get 76.2 centimeters. This box is 80 centimeters wide, so it doesn't fit. So in summary, knowing how a, p, and q affect the quadratic function definitely help us when we're trying to rebuild the equation of a quadratic function. We know that p, q is the vertex, and remember that you always need to find the value for a. You can't just leave that one blank. To do this, you need to plug in p and q into your function, and then find another point on the parabola to plug in for x and y, so then you can solve for a. Plugging in this other point is using the concept of satisfying an equation. And looking at the direction of opening as well as the location of the vertex will allow us to find out how many x-intercepts a quadratic function will have. So your assignment is on pages 158 to 162. You could do anything from questions 8 onward. Good luck and we'll see you in class.